Good morning, guys. It is Sunday today. I have a lot to prepare. I started work last week. I went in two days because <laughs> I was supposed to go in four, but the other two days, somehow I woke up with pink eye. Um, so I had to go on antibiotics and stuff. I was trying natural remedies, but um, natural remedies take a little bit longer. And since the kids' first day was on Thursday, I kind of had to be good by then. I couldn't be going in with like a red eye and it was really, really red. Um, so yeah, that was, that was that. But anyway, I started work. So today's video, we have a lot of preparing to do. I have some bread I need to bake. I have breadcrumbs I gotta make, even though I don't know if I'll make the breadcrumbs today because I'll be baking the bread today. We shall see because it's gonna be nice and fresh so I might let it sit out for a couple days. I have my snack packs I need to prepare. Um, I started making sourdough cinnamon rolls last night, um, so I gotta finish that up, and I gotta do that kind of now. Um, I wanted to freeze my bell peppers, you guys know, or maybe you don't know, I don't know if I remember, I don't know if I filmed, but I canned some peppers, and with the rest of these peppers from my garden, I am going to steam blanch them and then freeze them. So I have a little bag in my freezer already, I'm going to do that with the rest of these. I picked these this, this morning and yes, uh, yesterday. So this is between this weekend. Um, so I got to get that done. And yesterday we went to Costco and I got some Honeycrisp apples so I could make some more apple chips. And yeah, we go through these apple chips pretty fast. This is what I'm down to in my container. So yeah, we have been eating them. So I'm gonna make some honey crisp apple chips and throw those in my dehydrator. Um, and what else did I need to do? Oh, and I gotta make Hazel's food today. So when we went to Costco, we got a ton of meat um, for Hazel. We also got um, everything else that I needed for that, which is cauliflower, green beans, carrots, which now I have like a extra, amount of carrots and I thought I could maybe make something with the carrots also I'm not sure yet um, so yeah I got quite a lot to do so I'm gonna preheat my oven my bottom oven to 450 for my bread which is in the fridge and it just needs to be baked today um, and then I'll preheat the upper oven to whatever I need for my pumpkin cinnamon rolls I got my cinnamon rolls here. So they're fermenting overnight. I do have some other ingredients I gotta add on into them. So I got two eggs that we're gonna add. And <laughs> how come I can't crack eggs on camera, guys? This is tragic. I need some more pumpkin puree. Oh. oh no, okay, oh my God, <laughs> not pumpkin puree. That's for the filling. So two eggs, I need baking soda, baking powder, and salt. All right guys, before I freak out some more, let's just get through this. So I need half a teaspoon of salt, and this I did in this specific container last night when I just added in the other ingredients, specifically knowing that I would have to um, mix it again this morning. So always read your recipe in advance. So this is baking powder. I need a teaspoon of this. And since I redid all my spice jars, I have baking powder in here now. And I got baking soda in here also, which is so great. Now I don't have to like go to a million different cabinets in my kitchen to get everything. Having a functional kitchen that works for how you bake and how you cook is super duper important, guys, and it will make your life so much easier. So as you like organize things for the first time, you may not think like, oh, I need this or this or this. Eventually, as you use your kitchen, you might reorganize things and where things go just so that it functions better for you, and that's totally fine. Um, you just need something that works for you. So 
you might see like haul videos, not haul videos, but like organization videos on YouTube and whatnot. But just because they have it organized a certain way does not mean it's not, it's gonna work for you too. So anyway, I've got this in here mixing now and I just need that all mixed together. Alright guys, so I need some softened butter. I don't have softened butter and let me make you guys straighter. Um, so I'm heating some up right now. I'm gonna put some flour on my counter. And I'm gonna roll out this dough. I'm gonna use one of my bowl things and I just dipped it in some flour. Um, and this is gonna help me get everything out. These bowl scrapers are so helpful. And it's less cleanup in the sink then because you really get to scrape out most of your dough. So it's really great that way. See, like it's not that much cleanup. Um, so I like it. Anyway, I gotta like roll this out and I hope I didn't heat up my butter too much because and I have to um, wash this because I got to make the crumb topping but first we're gonna try and roll this out as best as I could I feel like we need a lot of flour here and I'm supposed to roll this out until it's like a quarter of an inch thick I don't remember my other cinnamon rolls being this wet, but we're gonna go with it anyway. I need to like flip this over, cause oh my gosh. Nope, I feel like I gotta like, <laughs> I don't know, shape this some more or something. This definitely said to lightly flour a surface is definitely not lightly floured but at least it seems to be holding its shape a little bit better now so I'm gonna roll it out all right I just washed my bowl let's hope I didn't melt this too much maybe I melted it a little bit too much but we're gonna throw it in here anyway and hope for the best all right. um, what else did I need to add to that all right, butter, I need some pumpkin puree. So I still have some pumpkin puree from yesterday. I just put it into a container so I didn't keep it inside the can. And I'm very glad that I'm using up some more because I honestly didn't know what to do with this and I had already made pumpkin chocolate chip cookies yesterday. So there's that. Now I need some brown sugar, cinnamon, and pumpkin pie spice. All right, I got my cinnamon. And pumpkin pie spice. So cinnamon is uh, one tablespoon, which is equal to three teaspoons. And that's three. And the pumpkin pie spice, just one tablespoon. And I make my own pumpkin pie spice, guys. I don't remember the recipe that I follow but I will try and link it for you guys because I'm sure I have it somewhere saved on my Pinterest. So I'll try and find it down below for you guys. But it's literally just a mix of like cinnamon, um, cloves, allspice, um, nutmeg, and I'm not sure what else, but. All right, so I got all those together and I just need the sugar. So it's one cup of brown sugar all right so i'm just gonna throw that in here and then i'm gonna put this on the mixer all right guys let me get um this on the mixer i feel like i should be doing a million things right now in preparation like i should also put my steamer um to get it start steaming anyway let's mix that though because we need that <laughs> So I got my pot, I got a steamer, 
kind of just like sits on top and I'm just gonna fill up the pot with water but I don't want to see any water coming through this but this is also up really high so I don't need that much water okay guys so my pot is on there I'm gonna come back to this I took this off of the mixer and I think it was supposed to be crumbly well because my butter was pretty melted it's not very crumbly but it's fine we are going to roll this out I'm gonna get like a little I guess roller I have a larger rolling pin but I just thought this would be easier right now I mean I feel like it's supposed to be more of a rectangle so I think that's good Alright guys, time to roll this up and um, I think I'm going to do it the long way. It's supposed to make 14 cinnamon rolls, so I think I'll roll it up this way. So I'm going to cut this in half. Okay, I'm gonna spray a baking dish. All right guys, so I have my one dish here. The others I'm gonna put onto um, saran wrap. I totally forgot to click the on button, but I just poured some heavy cream over the top. And now we're just going to put them in the oven. Okay, I did prepare some saran wrap here and I am just going to arrange these kind of in the same way that maybe I would have them um, on my dish. But maybe I should have done that first. <laughs> Arranged them like on my dish with the saran wrap and then just taken them out. But it's kind of supposed to be like a little flower shape. This last one's a little sad, but it's all good. And this is gonna go in the freezer, and obviously I'll put it in a bag, like a gallon size Ziploc bag, but that's gonna go in the freezer for when I'm ready to bake it. All right, so I wrote down the instructions on here, but they are how to bake it, how to thaw it, which you just saw in the refrigerator. But I'm gonna go ahead and Throw these in here and put them in the freezer. Now anytime I want pumpkin sourdough cinnamon rolls, I'm all set. All right, so I had started, um, you know, doing the steaming, but I didn't even um, de-seed uh, my peppers, so I gotta do that so I could throw them in. And then I still gotta throw in my bread in the oven, which is already preheated. We're just behind on everything. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse them out from the seeds after I get most of them out. Whoa, what is happening here? It's like, <laughs> that is so weird. What is in here? Oh my god, it's so cool. It kind of looks like a tomato though. I don't know. They are next to my tomatoes. Um, that's interesting. Oh my god, that's so cool. Maybe it's like a little twin. That is so interesting. Alright, and the last one. And I am going to cut these into like quarters um, for me to steam them. Alright, so I'm going to rinse these all so I can get all the seeds out. All 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut these in half just for the steaming. And so my freezer book recommends to cut these into slices. I'm just cutting them up already into little pieces um, and freezing them that way just because I like it. But she did say if you want to prevent as much freezer burn as possible to just cut them into slices. But what I might do is freeze some more of these and vacuum seal them so that way um, I could prevent as much freezer burn as possible. So I, I could flash freeze them and then use my vacuum sealer for the very first time. I don't know why I don't use it more often, but I just don't. Um, and then do it that way. Oh, it is thundering out there. It's gonna be a storm today. All right, so I am just gonna take a bunch of these and add them to the steamer. enough so that they could all kind of be flat and set a timer for two minutes. All right guys, so these are done. I'm gonna take these out, just put them on the cutting board to cool down and about halfway I did flip them because you wanna make sure they kind of steam evenly. All right, so I'm gonna throw in the next bunch. All right guys, so I'm just gonna flip the these. It's a lot easier to flip these with your hands. It's really not that hot. <laughs> and my other timer is going on, so I'm gonna take out my cinnamon roll. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right guys, it is time to get the bread in the oven, something I should have done a while ago, but we're just getting around to it now because we've been nonstop doing things in the kitchen um so i'm going to prepare my parchment paper i could do two loaves at a time and i have four um that i need to bake today it is getting really scary out there guys i just hear the um the thunder all right so i got my loaf of bread and i'm just going to get this out on here and I gotta flip my peppers <laughs> oh that one stuck a little it's fine I don't know if you guys can hear that thunder it is very scary out there and it was lightning there was lightning last night when we did um outdoor movie night but yeah now it is on a whole other level of thunder and yesterday there was no thunder it was just lightning but today, right now, I'm seeing the, or I'm hearing the thunder. I haven't looked outside to see if there's any lightning, but all right, I'm gonna score this. I need a new bread lame. This is one that came in like a kit off Amazon. I don't love it. I feel like it's not sharp enough. Okay, let me get the peppers out. All right, so I'm gonna get my bread into the oven. I really should have used that bottom rack, which I normally do because it slides out. Um, I don't know what I did this time. All right, babe just came home with some cream cheese from Costco so I can make the cream cheese topping for the cinnamon rolls. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. So I need six ounces of cream cheese. All right, we need half a cup of heavy cream, which is about 120 grams. So 
So we're going to do 168 grams of this. I'm only doing 150 because I think that's plenty. And then two teaspoons of vanilla extract. So that's one. And a little bit less than two. I do have my own vanilla extract that I made, so I'm going to refill. I think I'm going to wash this out and refill my bottle with my homemade vanilla extract now. They say to use softened cream cheese for a reason, because I got clumps in here, but you know what? <laughs> Your girl needed that cream cheese, and I'm just going to eat it just the way it is and put that over my cinnamon roll. That's good. My loaves of bread just came out of the oven. They both got the nice little like ear here and this one also, and they look so good. So I just have the Dutch ovens back in there preheating a little bit before I put in the next two. While that's preheating though, I gotta slice my apples so I can get these into the dehydrator. So I'm using this fantabulous purchase that I got from TJ Maxx. It's really been so great guys <laughs> and okay and I need, I need this too okay so I'm going to show you guys how nice and thin my slices kind of come out because it's great oh no no <laughs> wrong attachment guys I got a little shredded <laughs> Shredded apples. <laughs> I mean, they taste really good. I was supposed to use this one. This is a slicer. All right, guys. Just finished eating that apple, so let me show you guys the actual slicing. But at least you guys got to see the other attachment because I will have this link down below. All right, here's the apple slicer. Um, because I already did the other half. So, I did get some kind of seeds in here, which obviously we don't want. So some of these that also have that bottom part that I need to kind of get rid of, I'm just going to cut them off and then I'm going to dehydrate these two halves. But some of them, um, let's see, like look how nice and thin they are. Some of them I will just cut out that center because I prefer the whole piece. But see, these slices are great. How nice these slices look guys so yeah definitely get yourself a slicer and now all my apple slices are nice and even definitely way different than the last time I did this because you know mine were all over the place before so I just got my other loaf of bread in the oven um, but I got to keep going with um, my apples so here we go with the next apple, I'm just making more slices. Alright guys, I am putting in stuff into my dehydrator. This is to my last uh, couple of trays. I ended up getting 10 trays with just the one pack of apples. I know last time I said one pack of apples wasn't enough, but when they are sliced thinner with that slicer, 10 trays works perfectly. So I have it on for, the temperature is 135. I have it on for 12 hours 
My dehydrating book says it could take anywhere from like six to 16 hours. Um, I think last time mine was even over 16 hours, but that's because my slices were thicker. And um, we'll see how long it takes this time. I will check on it before I go to bed and see how many more hours it needs. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for that. Babe also went to Costco and I wanted this shelving rack for all my canning stuff. I will put my pressure canner like in that bottom one. Um, and then everything else is going to be the canning goods. I got to get the, um, the liners for them so that it's not just like a middle kind of grid. So nothing kind of, you know, tips over or whatever. So I do have to get some of that. And then um, I'm going to try and put this together and then see how many more shelves I need to order. Because you can order individual shelves directly from the company, which is Trinity. Um, so this is going to be great. But it's down here because I'm going to put it down here it's going to be too hard to move later um so i'm just going to put it together in the basement where it's going to live so i just chopped up some of my peppers i'm going to flash freeze this batch and then i'm just going to chop these up put them in a bowl getting ready to flash freeze them after these are done okay guys so now i'm working on hazel's food um it is a lot so babe cooked all the turkey we got 21 pounds of ground turkey in there I chopped up the um, cauliflower and minced that. I was actually using my Vitamix. I just got that. So that was uh, fun to kind of try out, even though I need a food processor. Um, but for Christmas, I'm asking for the food processor Vitamix attachment. But I gotta wait because my food processor broke. I chose to get a Vitamix, so I'm making it work for now. Um, now I gotta make uh, I think it's like 20 something pounds of chicken and to minimize cleanup I am going to bake them in trays um, for like 20 to 30 minutes and while that's cooking in the oven I'll mince the green beans, the blueberries, the carrots and start putting her supplement powder mix together. Um, so yeah it's like, a, it's like a lot but I love cooking for her and I'll never stop because she's just so much healthier because of it and yeah oh my goodness guys my kitchen is a hot mess but i have the chicken in the oven i got four trays in there plus another three trays in the bottom one so i could cook them all together and then shred them all together so in the meantime i will i think i'm gonna do the carrots and the green beans mince those up um and just try and clean up this kitchen a little bit. <laughs> so guys, the chicken is still baking. I am working on the green beans. I moved everything to this ginormous tub and someone's already um, hungry. <laughs> but it's her food, so I'm letting her eat it even though it's not finished, but it's fine. <laughs> I just realized we have nothing for dinner today, but I just, uh, finished, I guess, cooking Hazel's uh, beef liver. <laughs> it was supposed to be lightly cooked and I have all of her food in this giant tub right here. Um, so I'm going to mix this in also and get some dishes done and things. Um, but I also have to package all this food up from my munchkin but yeah that was the last bit that I needed in here and her food is ready so yeah this is what it looks like and then I just package it up into baggies and she's set for quite some time all right guys so like I mentioned I have no dinner um, so I'm cutting up some potatoes and I didn't use one of the pans that I was gonna use to make chicken so I am gonna use that to just make like a potato chicken bake casserole thingamabobby so I am just cutting up some potatoes and I like the recipe I'm following because I don't have to peel the potatoes or anything like that oh and it's like a ranch potato chicken thing I'm very excited it's gonna taste great I hope I have ranch dressing <laughs> I didn't even check Oh my goodness, I'm sure I have some ranch dressing somewhere. I hope. 
and I wish I didn't um, freeze all the bacon that we bought yesterday from Costco, but I did, and I'm not going to go unfreeze that now um, because that would have been really good in this dish, and it actually says to add that also, but I just don't have bacon. And you know what? That actually adds another step anyway because they want you to cook the bacon in advance. Well, you know what? I'm trying to make a one pot meal here and not have to do any more dishes than I already did today. <laughs> All right, that looks about four cups of potatoes. All right, it looks like we're gonna do a little bit more dishes because I just need another bowl. <laughs> Potatoes in. All right, I found some dressing. All right, so I need one third cup of this. Then I need parsley, oregano, paprika, and salt. All right, I got all my herbs and stuff. So parsley, I need a tablespoon. Parsley, one teaspoon of oregano. I happen to like oregano, so I'm just gonna do, um, I did two half teaspoons, but I made them full. Uh, one teaspoon paprika. I'm using a half a teaspoon measurement in case you're wondering why I'm doing two of these. All right, well, I don't know how much salt, but that seems good, I guess. All right, so mix this all up and then put this in a dish. All right, so I got my baking dish here. And I'm gonna put in my potatoes. All right, we're gonna Put this in the oven as soon as it preheats, which it is getting there. Um, and I'm gonna get started on the chicken. I don't even know if I was recording, guys, but I <laughs> cut up potatoes, covered them in some spices. I now have a little bit under than two pounds of chicken, but we are gonna go with that. Um, and that's what I'm gonna dice up. So I got my cutting board here and just going to dice this up. I'm not using the best knife for this, but it's fine. And I'm just adding it into the same bowl. That's what the recipe said I could do. <laughs> so that's what I am doing. All right, my oven is preheated. I am going to throw in my potatoes for 30 minutes and I'm going to mix them every 10 minutes or so. All right guys, so my potatoes have been baking for 30 minutes now, and now the recipe says to add my chicken on top of this, so I'm gonna do that. And I'm just supposed to like add it on top, and I decided I am gonna do the bacon, so I am defrosting some because this is, even though this is like a one pan kind of dish, there's a lot of steps to this and I have time because the potatoes were 30 minutes, the chicken is another 20 minutes, so that's enough time for me to defrost and maybe cook some bacon, hopefully. I'm gonna try um, to cook it too, but yeah. So this is what I'm doing. And I did all the dishes for the most part already and cleaned up the kitchen and the counters um, and everything. But the only thing I didn't do is my snack pack, which I'm working on now, and pack up Hazel's food. All right, so I'm gonna throw this back in for another 20 minutes. And I packed a couple of these snack packs last week, but because I had pink eye, I didn't go in two of the days. So all I really have to do is just kind of add my fruit, which I'm doing mango and um, peel an egg. So mango, peel an egg, and um, I'll probably maybe add a pickle. 
But yeah, that's going to be my snack pack. I'm just going to do these two because my other mangoes are still ripening. Um, so they're not even ready yet. But these two were good. So I had put them in the fridge to kind of slow down the ripening process since they were um, already pretty good. Looks like um, stuffing from Thanksgiving. No? Maybe. You let her just eat from here? Yeah. Oh, I was still packing it up, but she kept coming over every time I added something. <laughs> so I would just let her eat. Yeah, when, uh, she went to town with the turkey with the green beans and the cauliflower. And then I started adding chicken and carrots and then she came back to have some more. All right, here is dinner, guys. I hope it's good. If it is, I will link it down below. Um, and we got our plates here. Okay, guys, that is everything for today. Babe helps me pack up Hazel's food, so that is all done. Also, it's been a long day, guys. I've been in the kitchen since like 8.39, um, and it is now 7.56, so 8 o'clock. 12 hours. I've been <laughs> on my feet. My feet are killing me, by the way, in case you didn't know. Um, and I still have to do something with this bread. <laughs> And I just want to go chill on the couch and sit my butt down. But anyway, guys, that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed all this kind of cooking and baking with me today. And I will see you guys in my next cook and bake with me. Bye.